you are here to prove that Mr. Birch is the biological father of your 23-month-old son, Unai. You state that you have had a romantic relationship with Mr. Birch since 2009, and his paternity denial makes you furious. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Birch, you claim that Ms. Cochran and you never had a relationship and were only friends with benefits. Uh, you say that you were not having sex with her during the window of conception and are here to prove you are not the father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Cochran, a seven-year relationship and he's denying your baby? Why? Your Honor, he's denying my son because he doesn't want the responsibility of another child, nor does Mr. Birch want to pay child support. Mm -hmm. That's why I believe he's denying our child. Your Honor, we only had a, a friends with benefits since we first started. And I made it clear to her. I made it clear to her that's what I wanted from the beginning. I understand that Mr. Birch only wanted friends with benefits and I was fine with that. And I understood that Mr. Birch did not want any more children and I was fine with that. But it is said and done now. I'm here today to let him know that this is his child and I would appreciate if he step up and take care of him. So wait a minute, let, take me back to the nature of this relationship. Now you say it's friends with benefits. And do you agree, is that what it was? That's what it's always so, been, Your Honor. It's always been that? Always for how been. many years? Seven years, Your Honor. Seven years. Seven years. Of no commitment. No commitment. Just being friends. Just being friends and having sex. And having sex. Unprotected sex. Unprotected sex. No, Your Honor, that's, that's not true. What's the truth then, according to you? At the times we would have sex, she was actually bringing the condoms to me. So you were that... using protection? No, ma'am, that is not true. We did not start using protection until after I was pregnant. I have to ask you this, Ms. Cochran. Why were you having unprotected sex with Mr. Birch when you knew this was just a friends with benefits Because in the thing? beginning of the friendship, uh, it started out as friends with benefits and as the years progressed, the friendship turned more into a relationship for the both of us, at one point, Your we Honor, were supposed to never, relocate never to no another city and we were going to be in a relationship. There was never I was uprooting my children. He was going to uproot his children for us to move to a different city for she him to become... She asked me to be in a relationship and I told her I wasn't ready. Your so Honor. you didn't have a plan to relocate together and be in a relationship. No, Your Did Honor. you have another girlfriend or someone else you were dating during all this time? Your Honor, he had five other women <laughs> at this time that I'm, I know of. And in the beginning of the relationship, like I said, we were together every day, except for Saturday, when he had me under the impression he was going back to his hometown to spend the night with his mother. Five other women. And five other that was, women that's that only, she, lived she only with thought, him. She only thought that, that, lived that I had with him, women. Your Honor, five women that lived with him. That lived with him, lived Your with Honor. Him. There no, was multiple women true. outside of the five that, that I wasn't not, aware of. Until wait true. a minute, How, are you living at... He was living with five women at the same time? Or no, you mean during the course of the year? The course of the year. I was about yes, to man. say. <laughs> no. So I if he's living with other women, how do you think that you're going to be in a relationship with him? Because it didn't start out like that, Your Honor. The women came after he relocated back to his hometown is when I got knowledge of the other women. Your Honor, actually, what she would do is ride past my house every time. Not and, once he and relocated she would to see a city. car. She would see a car sitting in front of my house and she would assume, oh, she lived with you. That's or, not true, or, or, or she would assume that a car was for someone that, that, that lives there or someone that was there. And, and it could be from somebody from down the street. Your Honor, me and this man have been in a friendship for many years. We've been through many different locations together. I pretty much know what cars belong and which cars don't. Yes, I did ride by his house initially in the beginning because I All didn't know time, what he was doing. Then All when the Mr. Time. Birch told me, Every don't ride by minutes. my house no more, I told him to quit having other women over there or just tell me about them. He had me under the impression that as long as I was loving him and giving him sex the way that he wanted, I had nothing to worry about. And I believed it. I'm a woman. I get it. Sometimes you just love mm -hmm. someone. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't turn out the way you want. Mm -hmm. And I can see the tears in your eyes right now when you can barely even look at him because you still love him now. He's my friend. He's my friend, and uh, after today, either we're gonna get stronger or we're gonna remain what we've been. 
That's just how I see it. I've, Mr. Birch is the first man I ever loved. Hopefully he's not the last. He was my first man that I ever loved. I felt like because he was a little older that he was a little bit more mature, but I come to find out over the years that older men are just as sneaky <laughs> as younger men. But I never snuck anything towards her. I, I was honest with her the whole time. Honesty is not in his policy, Your Honor. He was never honest. He was honest that he honest didn't want to have a relationship. One. He was honest about not ha wanting to have a relationship. He was honest about not wanting to have any more children. But he was dishonest about a lot of things, Your Honor. He told you, we have this friendship, but I'm not really ready for a relationship, but we have a friendship with benefits. And you felt like if you're going to get involved with somebody and be with somebody else, then at least let me know because you know I'm here and I am thinking that you're going to get in position to be in a relationship one day, and when you do that, it would be with me. And that's what the assumption was, Your Honor. Ah, uh, okay. Because I'm not understanding why you have yourself so far out there for a man that keeps telling you he doesn't want to be in a relationship with you, and he's constantly with other women. So, when you would see these other women, you would be she's offended. Never I didn't seen, see, she's never I seen didn't no other see women. She, any she other women until the after car. a year. No, until after assume. a year later. Okay. When I was riding up the street and he was coming out with another lady and his family members informed me that that was his girlfriend. Got it. And I asked him who she was. He said it was his high school sweetheart that he had rekindled things with. I asked him then, how can you be in a relationship with her when I just asked you four months ago to be in a relationship with me? And he said he wasn't ready then, but he was ready now. I was okay with him having a girlfriend because I didn't feel the effects of her. She lived in another city. Him and I lived in the same city, and I was still with him every day but Saturday. And when he left for work, because he's on the road... I don't understand that every day but Saturday. Every day but Saturday, I don't Your get Honor. it. We weren't together on Tuesdays or Thursdays or Sunday nights. That's not either. True, but Honor. you still were carrying on a sexual relationship with her when you had this girlfriend in the other city. Don't lie. That would be a yes. Were you just playing this girl, Mr. No, Curry? I was not. Did you know how much she cared about you? Yes, I, I didn't know that. To me, but she's made it so you. obvious. No, she's made it so obvious. Though, look, I always say, when you know a woman loves you, if you don't want to be bothered with that woman, then why are you coming over and having sex with her more than one time in a week? You know that only fuels the love she has for you and, and makes her think there's a possibility. I never made a thing was a possibility. That's not true, I was Your honest Honor. with her the whole time. That's not true, Your Honor. So you're saying she was already pregnant when she told you? Yes. That's not true, Your Honor. Mr. Birch is delusional <laughs> and he's not telling the truth. I went to Tennessee the morning I left for Tennessee. She said, I had sex with you and I had sex with, with him the, 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 night, the night after. And I'm like, huh? I, I was, like, shocked. Like, really? Did you tell him you had sex with somebody else as well, Ms. Cochran? I sure enough did, Your You Honor. did. I sure enough did. After the baby was born, she completely just, just forgot about him. Oh, you're the dad. Your and Honor. I'm like, I'm, what, what about him? You told me about him. And you admit to that? Yes, Your Honor. So why are you just bringing him to court to prove that he's the father? Because, Your Honor, if I may submit to yes. the court Ron, the calendar... Yes, Ron, please get her evidence. Thank you. Uh, so you're submitting a calendar to the court. What does this calendar outline? Uh, on the 5th of October, Your Honor, that was my girlfriend's birthday from California, and Mr. Birch had texted me wanting to see me, and I was on the other line with her, and I said, my old man's texting me, I'm about to go see him. And she said, don't give in to him, you're being a mashed potato. So because I did go there and I had sex with Mr. Birch that night, I wrote on the calendar so that way my best friend and my mother would not know that I had went back to Mr. Birch and had sex with him again, so I wrote mashed potato. You know what? I don't know why she didn't write brought Magnum condoms with me. Because we didn't use no condoms, Your Honor. She brought, she brought condoms that whole, that whole month. The following week on the 12th, Your Honor, I was with him that Friday night up until that Saturday morning when he left. I was supposed to go with him on vacation. Huh? Two, three days before it was time to go. Where would I have been? He informed me that I wasn't able to go because there, not, there wasn't no room in the cabin. I fell for it and believed I, it. I never told her and, that. And he went on. During the time that he was gone, a family member sent me pictures and videos of a bear being on their porch 
And in the silhouette, I seen a female that I've known Mr. Birch to be encountering, and I decided then that he wasn't alone and I wasn't gonna be either. And that's when I decided to have sex with another man. So you know that you had sex with the other man when? On the 13th. So you're admitting that you had sex with Mr. Birch on the 12th, the other man on the 13th? Yes, ma'am, the 12th. After I had a more inclusive ultrasound, they pinpointed my conception date and they believed that I conceived between October 2nd and October 8th. I was with Mr. So they Birch. gave you a window of conception? Yes, ma'am. Okay, got you. So I'd like to hear from your witness, ma'am. Step to the podium and state your name for the court. Andrea Brandon. Hello, Ms. Brandon. What would you like to add? What do you know about this situation? I, I know Tian. He's... I'm not gonna sit here and badmouth him. He's just not a good friend. He has played on her emotions since day one. He knew what he was doing. He has four other kids that he takes care of, okay? So it's not that he can't be a good father, but he's not a good friend. I'm a very good friend. No, you're not. That's one thing He had this say. woman thinking that she was... He uprooted her kids, had her thinking that they were gonna be together. Had I her, don't know where she got Had they from. was going to move together. I done been to the house to where y'all went together that y'all was going to move in together, Tian. I don't know where she got... Where she get that from. We went house-seeing together. You got off of work. She had your kids. Your house kids fooled with her. Even when y'all don't get along. Yeah, He's lying. You went to go see no house together? They was with you every day. Every day. I'm not lying. Every day. So, Miss Brandon, what do you know about the paternity? Well, I was there when... Whenever she conceived... Well, I'm not gonna say I was there, <laughs> but I was watching her kids. I was staying with her. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Thank Brandon, you. for your testimony. Thank you may you. be seated. Take me to the birth. Was Mr. Birch present? No, ma'am. Um, well, where was he? He's such a great friend. Where was he? He was, uh, he said he wasn't taking the day off, so it was just me and my mother in the delivery room. I called Mr. Birch, let him know the baby was here. He said, okay, he hung up, that was it. Did you list a father on the birth certificate? No, ma'am. I have the birth certificate right here, Mass. I'd like to see that. Ron, can you please hand me that? But I did give... And Mr. Birch knew that the baby was there because I called him to ask him how to spell his name. So, so like, your child's like full name is... Say it out loud. You nice to Jean Lewis Crockerin. And I never even heard about him being the Lewis Crockerin. That's, that's something new to me. I told him, but he never believed it. You never knew? I never knew. Never know. He didn't want to know. He didn't want to believe it. He didn't she want to know. told me that. I that, called him, that's asked him for to me. the spelling. He gave me the spelling, and he asked me why. And I said, because I'm putting your name on his birth certificate. He has my, my, uh, my first name, but not my last name, though. That don't make any sense to me. I wanted him to sign his son's birth certificate at his own free will. Look, that is admirable. You Mr. already... Birch admitted to my friend that he knew he was the father once he seen you and I at eight weeks old. He's a handsome young man. But if you, if you look at me, I'm midnight black. She's like 11.50, and he's like 8.59. Yes, ma'am. So, what? So, yep. I, I mean, I'm talking about skin complexion. You feel like the child's skin color doesn't indicate that you doesn't could match. be That's correct. Your Honor, father. skin color may not match, but Mr. Birch had asked if he could claim that skin color on his taxes. Ooh. Oh, that's right. Uh-oh. Okay, she so... straight told me no. Now, you know mm -hmm. that's ignorant. It's very... You standing over here denying a baby but asked to claim him on your taxes? Yes, I did. Girl, I know you in love with this boy. I know you are, because you can't see nothing. Yeah. That's a lot of nerve. It is. Okay, so let me ask you this. Was that your way of saying that you knew deep down that was your child? If you're gonna claim him on your taxes? No, no. Yes, ma'am. Ron, I'm ready for the results. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Crockerin versus Birch, when it comes to 23-month-old Unai Crockerin, it has been determined by this court. You... are not the father. Ooh. Ooh, Lord. Ms. Crocker? I apologize. And I accept your apology. I know there was a part of you that truly wanted this child to be his because it's just another way to be connected to the man that you love. No, no, ma'am. Ma'am? <laughs> yes, ma'am. I wanted it for the children. I've heard the testimony. 
You heard the phrase, love is blind. Mm -hmm. Baby, you've been blind as a Betsy bug up in here for eight years. You can't see that he's just not gonna be with you. Ms. Parker, in your suit, you claim Mr. Morton fathered your seven-month-old son, Aaron, while in a relationship with his current girlfriend. Yes, Your Honor. You say the only reason he denies paternity is because his girlfriend turned him against you because she's been unable to conceive a child with him. Yes, Your Honor. In addition to the paternity test, you're suing for $2,047 in back child expenses. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Morton, you say the timing of Ms. Parker's pregnancy doesn't add up, and when today's DNA results come in, you will win the case because you're not the father. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Parker, how did you end up having sex with Mr. Morton if he has a girlfriend? First of all, Your Honor, that's my baby father. Anytime I want to have sex with him, I'm going to have sex with him. You understand? Like, I was vulnerable. He called me. So, you know, we did what we did. So, hold on. You have a child with Mr. Morton Yes, I already. have a five-year-old son. And he's not the child in question. No, Aaron is. But you also still continued a sexual relationship. Yes, with the both of them. Both of them? Yeah. You were having sex We've had with... Sex, I have sex with both of them. With Mr. Morton? And Mrs. Lemon. And his girlfriend? Yes, yes, Your Honor. Yes. Oh, so a threesome at the same time or you have two separate relationships? You no, know, threesome at the same time, separate relationship. If I don't want to have sex with her and I want to have sex with him, that's what happens. Oh, okay. It just got interesting. Um... Well, the only reason, Your Honor, the only reason why she was able to have sex with us is because I asked my boyfriend to have sex with her because she was lonely. My desires, me and my little freakiness, I said, my boyfriend, can you have sex with your pregnant baby mother because she's in need? Pause, Your Honor. How would she know Pause, that she's Honor. not there? Your Honor, that is not true. Before I even left to go anywhere, before I was gone for a while, we was having sex before then. She wanted to have sex with me. Your Honor, they be tight. They don't ask her boyfriend nothing. Her boyfriend bought it all anyway. He had two girlfriends from the beginning. So that's, that's, um, consensual? Consensual or not, if I want to have sex with my baby father, Your Honor, it goes down. Try it now. It goes down. Try it, it goes now. down. I don't want to try When the last now. time I'm you good. did it? When I'm the last good. time you did it? When we did it, right? No. So ultimately, Ms. Parker, Ms. Lemon, Mr. Morton, you all agree that you were all in a sexual relationship. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. And so you also are in an agreement that there's a possibility that this could be your child? It could not be my child because the timing is not right at all. I'm not tripping off of that. I know that that's my son's father. I know. He looks exactly like my other son. And so you're doubtful, Mr. Morton, because you say there's a timing issue. Yes. She so supposed I want to understand got pregnant your doubt. in May. But from my understanding, that's only would be seven months if she I had never my son said I got pregnant in May, Your Honor. Okay, hold on. L let me get my calendar so I can just understand what's going on exactly. When were you intimate with Miss Parker the week during the of, window? The week of Mother's Day, May 11th, I believe. You're intimate that day. The only intimacy we had on Mother's Day was all sex, Your Honor. How you gonna get pregnant judge, off of all judge, sex, Your Honor? Judge. When was Aaron born? December 5th. So December 5th. It only add up to about seven months. Her boyfriend been locked my up since February, was, my and that's was the guy December. that she was so telling me So, the baby was born the from the December beginning. 5th. So, your doubt is that it's only seven months from when baby Aaron was born to when you were having sex with her, and that doesn't add up to you? Yes, well, ma'am. Yeah. And, Ms. Parker, when was the last time you were intimate with someone else before that May 11th period when you were the intimate only person with Mr. Your Honor, I lie to you not. The only person that I had unprotected sex with was my baby father. Was Mr. Your Morton. Honor, that's a lie. Your Honor, that's a lie. She clocked she, my... We <laughs> down. Yep, I'm clocking it. You Just can't like you clock clocked it, though, baby. I can. You can't. We downtown. You can't clock the guy it. walks up to her. They talking and everything, and he swears up and down, Earn is his. She had to keep reminding him that it's not yours, boy. It's not yours. I had sex with you after he was already in my stomach. Exactly. Exactly, I but said. But you told us that you didn't have sex with nobody. I just said I didn't pregnant. have unprotected sex. That's she a all lie, over the I place, Your Honor. That's what it is. That's a lie. She was all over Your the place. Honor. Let's let's get some let's yeah. get some control. Let's let's. I want to understand this story. Your testimony, Miss Parker, is that 
You weren't intimate with anyone else during that time? I did not have unprotected sex. Yes, that's what I honor. said. I, I, were you having sex with anyone? Are you serious? Your Honor, were I... You... Listen, my, I do what I do. <laughs> I'm not... I love... I love me. You understand me? I don't have unprotected sex with nobody but the ones that I trust. I trust this man. So, yeah, every time I have sex with him, it's You think of me so bad, every so you trust time. me too, right? I, you think time. of me so bad, you, you doubt just... me, but you had sex with me too, so that means yeah, you trust me, right? Yeah. You right? You like me, right? Oh, I okay. like the way you um do your oh, thing. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that's what I like. I know. I like that's the way fine. you do your thing, that's baby. Fine. That's I all. Know. That's I know. all. I'm both at work. Okay, listen, listen. You tripping, Miss Parker? You stated that you weren't having unprotected sex with anyone else. Yes. But you're saying you're only. You only have unprotected sex with Mr. Morton. Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Let me explain my side of the story because I'm trying to, you know. Yeah. Be, when my before my boyfriend went away, I was pregnant by him. That's what they're getting confused. I had a whole miscarriage, Your Honor. A whole miscarriage by this man. And she all of a sudden. I had a... So, what you're saying is you were pregnant, before, but Before, like, mistake. this was before, though. This is before I got pregnant again. He was again. only locked up... You're wrong. He wasn't even something. away when I was pregnant. He was with me so the bottom when line I was is pregnant. So, the bottom line is you were, in we fact, pregnant by your by boyfriend. Him. Yes, I was. But you miscarried. But I miscarried. Listen, Ms. Parker, I'm trying to explain what my understanding is so you can correct me. Okay. I was pregnant by my boyfriend. Right. Yes, but I had a miscarriage. Exactly. Subsequently, I got back in a sexual relationship with Mr. Morton, exactly. had unprotected sex, and I was pregnant again. Yes, Your Honor. That's what I wanted to understand. Yes, Your now Honor. let's move forward. At the point you realize you're pregnant, do I you told, tell Mr. Morton. Yes, that's you what I'm trying Mr. to get to. I told him I was pregnant, and I did. I'm not gonna lie. I told him this is not your baby. Being as though I have a sonogram telling me I'm 13 weeks. So when I go to my first prenatal appointment and they give me a fetal assessment and they say, no, miss, you're eight weeks pregnant. Your baby is due December the 24th. So you went to your appointment and then your due date got adjusted. Yes. So initially, when you got pregnant, they gave you a certain due date. Yes, ma'am. And you said, based upon that due date, this that is not, not your child exactly. because I was not sleeping My with you point then. Exactly. Then you go, because that's what happens. You do, you go to subsequent appointments as you get further along in your pregnancy, they then gave you another test yes, they gave and determined, oh, no, the first due date we calculated was wrong. Exactly. You're, you're, in fact, how many weeks? Eight weeks pregnant. You're eight weeks. I was eight weeks pregnant when I got that sonogram. And I gave... I went home and I gave him the sonogram to let him know we got a baby on the way. What was your response, Mr. Morton, when she told you we have a baby on the way, they miscalculated my due date, and now I really believe it's your child? What was your response? I had my doubts because of... She what she had told me. You still had doubts. Did you participate? You have a child with her already. Did you yes. participate in the birth? Did, were you were you there through the pregnancy? I didn't were go you... to none of the appointments. I ain't show up to none of the the doctor's well, I got appointments. A, but I, have I a was picture. there with him. He's, he's, he's talking about. Him. I have a picture of him holding my son when he first came out. Rome, may I see that, please? So, Mr. Morton, you say that you didn't go to the appointments. No, ma'am. But this is a picture of you holding baby Aaron when he was first born. Yes. So you went to the hospital when he was first born? Yes, I was there. To see him? Yes. No, he Did you sign out. the birth certificate? Out. I seen when he came out. Did you sign the birth certificate? No, ma'am, I didn't sign the birth certificate because of my doubts. What is that I evidence was... you're holding for me? The birth certificate I didn't sign. I'd like to see that. So you decided not to sign the birth certificate because you felt like, I just have too many doubts. I don't want to do that. Have you been involved with baby Aaron since? Yes. You have. So you still have doubts? I still have doubts. He got doubts, Your Honor, but he on Facebook, my son. Hand that to me. What is that, Miss <laughs> Parker? This is a page from Facebook from off of his page. My son hands always in the air, but you got so many doubts. Wait, this is a it. picture of baby Aaron from your Facebook page, Mr. Morton, it says, my son's hands are always in the air? <laughs> yes. You, you, you wrote that? Yes. So if you had doubts, why would you post that? I know this man. You feel me? I know he loved people, kids. I know he loved children. I gave this man his first child. I know this. You understand and what I'm saying? she feel like she holds him hard, she don't. Once again, she like don't. I said, it don't matter. Like I said... Yeah. It don't matter. I know, but like I said, this is not the first situation. And, and, and so, th that. listen, this feeling that you... He steps up to the plate and takes care of other people's children, yeah, but so does not I... properly 
take care of baby Aaron exactly. is the basis of your suit. Right. You're suing for $2,047 in childcare expenses, things you've spent on baby Aaron That's right. since he's been born. That's right. And you say Mr. Morton's done nothing. Besides $30 and she... some hand-me-downs. But in terms a lot of, of things a lot of hand -me -downs. contributing to the childcare expenses that she has incurred, have you Contributed she anything besides no thirty dollars? Anything because I never did anything to her, but gave her that thirty dollars. That's what I wanted to know. All right, so just the thirty dollars. Do you have any receipts from what yes, you spent, you what you've done? Thank you. Explain to the court, ma'am, the items, things that you've purchased thus far. I see you have diapers, diapers um, baby wipes, um, bottles, clothes, formula, formula toiletries, yes, all that. But I've been working almost. It's a the whole total year. of this two thousand forty-seven dollars. Yes, ma'am. Okay, two thousand forty-seven dollars. Mr. Morton, you acknowledge that all you've done is the thirty dollars that I put that in her hands. Right. For right. Her. For it these two thousand forty-seven dollars worth son, expenses, though. you've paid thirty of it. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna rule on this after we get the DNA results because, of course, that will determine whether or not you have a responsibility to care for this child. Ms. Parker, I'd like to hear from your witness before yes, we get to the results. Ma'am, please stand. Thank you so much for joining us. What's your name, ma'am, stated for the record? Marie Dunlap. Ms. Dunlap, you are? I'm Mr. Morton's mother. Oh, you are? Yes. You're Mr. Morton's mother? Yes. And what do you have to add, ma'am? Well, for, for the most part, as far as support system, when she first had baby Aaron, she did not have anything because she was supposed to try to get together a baby shower. So she did have him early. So as far as support system, it was me and my daughter, which is Eric's sister. And Mr. Mother. Morton's sister. And her mother. And excuse me, I'm talking. It don't matter. It does. It don't. So therefore... Did you just own. let her disrespect your mother? Yeah, mom? real bad. I'm yeah. sorry, I had to catch that. Come again. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I don't even know why she over there. She don't do nothing. That, that, that's, it, it doesn't, ma it doesn't like matter. It doesn't matter. That's still your that. mother. That's do, still your I mother. I do get my grandson. All right, so ma'am, the bottom line is you know what about this situation? Well, as far as them two, to be honest, I really think that they never stopped dealing with each other from time to time. Even when she had the boyfriend, I still believe they were dipping and dabbing because him and the boyfriend had got into it over I don't know what the altercation was about. But I heard about they had got into it, and it's several times they they are together. So it is your belief that baby Aaron is your is your grandchild. Yes, that's that's us all the way. Have you witnessed your son connect with this child? Yes. And you've connected with the child. Yes. When your family accepts the child without yes. doubt. We do accept him without a doubt. Without doubt. Without a doubt. I don't share his doubts because because that's that's ours. You, that's the more. You wouldn't order. know my doubts, Your Honor. My I, mother don't you, know anything about the situation. Every time I try to put her into the situation, she don't want to bother. Thank you so much for your testimony. You may be seated. Where are we going from here with well, this? Let me tell you where I'm going from this. When you read them DNA tests and they tell and they tell you that that's that man's son, I'm going to child support. That's where I'm going with this. I'm <laughs> that, going straight downtown. Good. You got me twisted. Come on now. And I'm... so I have to ask this: Are you all gonna continue to have this unprotected sex? No and sex. This... No sex, Your Honor. He's good. He's good with his with his wife. <laughs> How long that's gonna last? <laughs> Feel me? I mean, well, what's, what, what's the point of you He's knocking good. what we have, He's Mom? He's I mean, Ebony. I'm knocking Honor, it because of the fact Honor, that I this never, is the reason why my Honor, son I never, first denied. of all, I'm, I, 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 this is out of character for me. I have never, ever in a yeah. million years came at this woman like this. It's one thing when you sitting there stating facts, but it's another thing when you trying to degrade me. The reason that I feel the way I feel about her is because we formed a relationship. Her whole pregnancy with Aaron when she moved to that house, I was right there with her. Every pain, every time my foot got swollen, I wanted to rub it. I took care of her and to support her and to show her that she wasn't alone. I didn't care what my boyfriend did. If he didn't want to be a part of her life, a part of Aaron's life, if he denied him, if he felt anyway, I ignored that and I still played a role. I'm I'm a very loving person. I'm a very honest person. Please I've never her, done anything I to her, 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 and I have never I told him not one time, mama. for Your that's Honor, to deny about. him. She's been here trying listen, to make me low, Your Honor, and that's not the case. I would never do nothing like that L to her. And listen, I think before I go to the results, I just need to ask the question, are you two finished? Because it's become obvious that we're talking about the relationship between you and Mr. Morton, and yet there is still a relationship between you and Ms. Lemon that has a lot of unfinished workings. It's a lot going on here. Let's get to the results. Please, Your Honor. Please. 
These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Parker versus Morton, when it comes to seven-month-old Aaron Morton, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Morton, you are Aaron's father. Thank you. I told you. Like, I'm not no... Come on. Thank you. I need that paper so I can go down child support tomorrow morning when I get up. <laughs> Ms. Parker, you came to court with a suit in the amount of $2,047. Mr. Morton is, in fact, baby Aaron's biological father, which means you are legally obligated to care for that child, and Ms. Parker is entitled to half of the child care expenses she has incurred thus far. You admit you contributed $30. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. You came in suing for $2,047. Half of that is $1,023.50, less the $30 you contributed. So, therefore, my ruling is for the plaintiff in the amount of $993.50. Is that clear? Yes, yes ma'am. Your Honor. I feel like you two agreed to bring Ms. Parker into your relationship and now it seems like Ms. Lemon and Ms. Parker got more unfinished business than Mr. Morton and Ms. Parker, and they got two babies together. A relationship with two people is difficult enough to manage. Bring a third in, now you really got a mess that's magnified. How did you finally find them? How did you finally find them? I'm not uh, tech savvy or anything like that. It took my brother in 19... in, uh, 2015, and we were just sitting there talking one day in the living room, and I'm always talking about them when they was... her, especially her when she was little. And I said, I done tried this, I done tried that, whatever case it may be. He said, you ever try Facebook? I put in Marilyn Bird Waddell, and <laughs> popped right up. Wow. Popped right up. I start crying, like, like, like somebody... like somebody just hit me in the mouth, whatever case may be. I was crying so much, her... She was just... That's how I remember her, face and all and everything. And so, Ms. Waddell, <laughs> when you got that message and it said, this is your dad... Yeah. Did you feel like, I believe this? Or did you feel, no, who is this? not at all. What were you thinking? I didn't... I didn't think that... that, um... He was my father at all. That's what I the main just... thing came in. So, why did you decide to meet with him? Because he was so sure. He was so adamant. That he was that he was my father, and I'm just like you know I don't know my dad, so let me you know at least I can just take like this step. Maybe this is just just one step forward to figuring out who I am. So I decided to meet with him, and then we just wait. You say there. you didn't know your dad, but weren't you told Mr. Walls was your dad? Yes, mm-hmm. we were told that Mr. Walls was our father, but he wasn't there either. Oh, so I, I, okay. I met him about eight years ago. So all of this time. You told Mr. Walls is your dad. Yes. But because of his absence at some point, you entertained Mr. Hinton. Yes. I've always been told since I was about 16 mm-hmm. that Mr. Walls was my father, even though I had never met him a day in my life. That's, that's just also what I've been told from yeah. one of my older I'd siblings. I'd like to hear from Mr. Walls. I want to understand this. Stand up, please, sir. Stand over behind the podium next to Marshawn, please. State your name for the record. We know it was. And... Who are you? I'm Roy Johnson and Melinda's dad. You are? Yeah. I know they're my kids. Okay, so you do not have a doubt. Right. So what did their mother tell you? Well, I was at work one day and her mom came with my job and told me that she was pregnant. And I said, yeah, she said, they're your kids. So I said, okay. <laughs> yes, I knew that. So, um... You so, just said okay. Because <laughs> you knew... You knew you were in a sexual relationship with him. Right, right. <laughs> All right, so you didn't protest. No. All right. So, were you there with her mom throughout the pregnancy? Uh, yes, I was. Did you know she also had a relationship with Mr. Hinton? No, I didn't. But you are testifying that their mother told you you are their biological father. Right. And you accepted it. Right. Ms. Yeah. Waddell, have you ever heard that anyone other than these two men could be your biological father? <laughs> yes. You have? Yes. Yes. 
So what? these two who? are not these two are not the only men who claim to be my dad. There's also two other men who claim to be my father. Oh. What in the world? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of the men who claims to be my father, I know for a fact that he wasn't. And he literally just disappeared. I don't know where he went. And then what did the fourth one say? The fourth one said, um, I actually remember them, like the fourth, the other guy. I remember him and his family. Um, they used to call me a little bit. I remember going with him and his family over his house. His sister reached out to me, showed me pictures of me and my twin brother sitting on this man's lap, sitting on her mother's, on her grandmother's lap, everything. Pictures all the way up to we, t till we were about, I would say like, five or six, she had pictures, like, for years. And pictures of you and... Yeah, my twin with her family. With wow. this other with father's other family? Yes. The other guy? Yes. They got pictures of you all yes. the way up? Yes. They have pictures of us. So we decided to... And this is that. father number four? Yes. So four possible fathers and two are here? Yes, Your Honor. Well, one of them I did, um, I did test. And he, it came out that he wasn't. That's that's was that the number picture. three or number oh the that's one with four. all the pictures. Yes, yes. So he's out. Correct. He's out. Wow, this is a saga. Mm -hmm. This is this is a lot. Mr. Mr. Henton, have you prepared yourself? Did did you understand that there were four possible fathers? That there were four men that thought they could potentially be the twins' biological father? Yes. Well, when we met, when we met up initially at the restaurant, um, she was there before I got there, so I got there a little bit late. So I walked through the door, and it was just an instant. She ran into my arms, and we hugged. I did each not other. run into your arms. Ran no, I did not. You're lying. No, I didn't. Yes, I'm not did. just gonna run into yes, a stranger's did. arms. Yes, no, I, did. no, I did not. not no, I didn't. I'm I'm can I ask them? No. I, I do want to know something. I want to know something. I want to know something. Run into your arms. I want to know something, because this is this question is tugging at me. Ms. Waddell, when Mr. Hinton speaks about you, he speaks as if he tried, he speaks as if he loved you, he speaks as if he accepted you all. And there's such an animosity mm -hmm. that I, towards him that I didn't hear towards when you spoke of any other man that thought they potentially could be your father, too. What is it that makes you so angry or have so much animosity towards him? Because I have a, a lot of animosity and honestly a lot of resentment towards him because he just he just always talked about how he looked for us for years and years and years. We have been through so much. That's all he talked about how he looked for us. And I just feel like you didn't try hard enough, you know? And the animosity is because on top of him just suddenly just appearing, when he did appear, I felt like he just was like, I'm I'm at this time I'm 30 years old. He came in like bam, 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 like trying to father me, like trying to tell me what to do, like just overburdening me. And I'm just like, at this point, you seem to be my friend. Mr. Henton, I can see the pain in your eyes and the tears. What are you feeling? What is in your heart? He's crying now, you... but I've been crying for 30 years, 33 years, so. I do believe he understands that part. I don't think that he does. I asked him, like, I was hanging around, I was hanging with him, like, going up to Cincinnati on the weekends to spend time with him. I, you know, I was like, this is, this, this could be my dad, you know? And I, even though, you know, I'm hard right now, I very much do want a family and I want to know who my father is. I asked Mr. Hinton for a DNA test and he okay. refused. Now, this was three years ago. He says he did not need a DNA test. And I said, well, I do. I'm the child of the situation. It's not up to you to say, he said, I know that, um, that you're my daughter. I don't need a test. So he refused to get one. And I did tell him at one point that, you know what, since you want to be in our life so bad, and I think I was just very, I was very vulnerable at that point. Since you want to be in our life so bad, you know, I would really want a father. And my twin was a father. We want a family. So, you know, we'll let you be a part of this. And But then things just started happening. And I just started to feel like, you know, like, I really started to doubt it. So I asked him for another test. And he said no. I cut him off. And that's why we're here. Like, you, you, if, you can, if you cannot give me a test, I want nothing to do with you. You're not the only man who claims to be my father. And that, this is, now I get it. I, I needed to understand that. I have if listened to... If you're so to... sure you're our dad, why wouldn't you take a test? Exactly. That's, how, that's exactly how I feel. And, and, that, and that's it. And that's why 
It's so important. As we hear these cases in this courtroom, as I take this testimony, and as we try to be a voice for the voiceless, there is still that little girl in you. Mm -hmm. Now, because you were looking through life with that lens, which we know why you wearing those glasses, those were the glasses you were handed. You see the world through this because of what you've been through. There's another side to this story that we also see that you probably can't, where this man is saying... I don't need a test because I'm your dad and I just want to be your dad. A lot of men in this courtroom wouldn't do that. They would be just the opposite, saying, before I do anything, I want the test. The fact is, by me... When I get this envelope from Jerome, there is a very real chance he may not be your biological father. And he loses it all. So him saying, I don't want the test... It's basically him saying to you, I am committed to you no matter what. I don't care. But I understand why you need the test. That's what I told him. And I I have those results. Mm -hmm. What I want to make sure everybody here understands, based upon the testimony that was presented today, that we have in this courtroom two of four possible fathers, one of which has already been tested and is not the father, so we still have another man besides both of you who could potentially be the twins' biological father. Has everybody prepared themselves for that? Yes. (laughs) Have you prepared yourself? Um, I guess as much as I can, because, like you said, I I I can lose it all. Because this... These two here are, like I said, my legacy. This is who I've always made the man that I am, to make, to make me be a better man as life went on. You know, for one minute, I was just... I was no... I was just a guy out there. And then, next thing you know, I'm a, I'm a father of... I'm a grandfather of four. I mean, that, that could make any man's chest stick out, you know? Mm-hmm. And if you are our other father, all I ask and I plead to you is to be a father to them. But I, I will always be dad. I don't... Okay? Well, okay, when you, you keep saying that, you're gonna, all like, right. lose all... You're gonna lose so much and you're always gonna be our dad. But you were never our dad. You were never there. Oh. When you were at their funeral, for you to just walk away, that, for me, is enough. I walked away but, with you. you. Were so sorry. But, you Ms. completely Ms. walked Waddell, away. Ms. Waddell, I do want you to understand. I walked away he with you. He testified to the fact that he knows he blew it. He said that in his testimony. He said, I regret the day that I decided to leave the children behind and go off and get myself together. I know as a mother, that seems... I don't understand that. Absolutely. I am a mother too, honey, and I ain't going nowhere (laughs) that my son ain't going. And like you said, if we go... If we sleeping in a box, we gonna sleep in one together. But that's not always the way it worked. And... You are not very old, but you're old enough where there was a different culture and a different time. When a man like that would say, I'm gonna go off and get ready to get my kids and get myself together, it would have made sense. It would have said, yeah, you go get yourself together. Make sure you got a job. Make sure you got a place to live. Make sure you got all these things before you just bring these kids. Unfortunately, what happened is during that time, you all started this cycle that you could not get out of. And that's why paternity issues and secrets and sagas, that's why we do this every single day, because we know that there are children out here still hurting, just like you, because of things have happened, because there was no legal father of record for anyone to reach out to. I want to get you the answers. Are you ready? Yeah. Yes. Jerome, may I have the envelope? <laughs> Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. Because fraternal twins could have different biological fathers, we performed individual paternity tests on Marilyn and Marshawn. With that being said, it has been determined that they share the same father. (laughs) 
in the case of Hinton versus Waddell. When it comes to 33-year-old fraternal twins, Marilyn and Marshawn Waddell, it has been determined by this court. The father is Mr. Walls. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Hinton, I know this was not the answer you were expecting. I'm sorry that we had to go through all this. And I just want to tell you, Mr. Walls, you, you got your work cut out for you, but you got two great kids there. Yeah, I know. They are great, and they're going to make you proud. Like, I've been proud, you know. <laughs> 